Well, Michael Flynn has fired his legal team. The former national security advisor is awaiting his sentencing for lying to the FBI about his communications with Russia's ambassador. Now, this comes after a new voicemail reveals that an attorney for President Trump asked Flynn's lawyer for a, quote, heads up if any information that might be damaging to the president came up. If, on the other hand, there are, there's information that implicates the president, then we've got a national security issue, or maybe a national security issue, I don't know. Some issue we've got to, we've got to deal with, not only for the president, but for the country. So, uh, you know, then, then, you know, we need some kind of heads up uh, just for the sake of protecting all, all interests if we can without you having to give up any confidential information. All right, joining me now, Rachel Self. She's a trial and immigration attorney, plus Michael J. Moore, a former U.S. attorney in Georgia and partner of Pope and McGlamory. Good to have both of you. Good to be with you. Thank All right, you. Michael, you're up first. What does this move tell you? You know, um, there's nothing particularly um, odd about changing lawyers midstream. Uh, th these cases are long, they're complicated, they're expensive. Uh, and, and, and I don't know that I, I put a lot into the fact that, that, that he may be looking for other lawyers. Um, you, you remember that he had a little bit of a rough patch at the, the last hearing where the judge uh, he, they drew, drew some ire from the judge based on some filings that the lawyers has made. Uh, the case got continued for a period of time, and, and I think we're essentially in a place as he's looking to wrap things up. Some of his investigations has expanded a little bit. He's cooperating in another case. Uh, his, his cooperation will be necessary as they come back for sentencing, and he may be wanting to talk about that and have some new legal representation there. But just the fact that somebody changes lawyers, I don't put a lot of stock in. I do think there's an issue with the Dow transcript. That's going to come back. I think we've not heard the end of that. That seems to me to be the biggest cloud that's hanging over uh, anybody right now mm -hmm. uh, from the, in, the, in the Flynn case. All right, Rachel, so what do you think Michael Flynn is up to? And is this something the president should be paying close attention to? Well, I think it's really interesting, and I agree with Michael that um, there are many, many reasons why you might decide to change your lawyer. And it could be something as mundane as finances. His legal team is not inexpensive. Defense of a lengthy criminal matter is very, very expensive. It could be that they've had a difference of opinion. It could be that now that he's just at the final leftover point of the case, of just sentencing, he could just be wanting to make things a little bit easier. But it also could be something very different. What he could be doing is hiring new counsel to potentially withdraw his plea. And he could withdraw, which would be a very foolish move on his part, I think, but he could be withdrawing his plea. And if he doesn't, if, if he has his new lawyer come out on television and make a big stink saying this whole thing was part of the witch hunt, I was pressured, and I want, you know, I wanted nothing to do with pleading guilty, I'm withdrawing it now, then what it could happen is the president could utilize all of that to to continue to say, listen, this was just a witch hunt. This is absolutely ridiculous. So then the if Mueller he does that, if Michael Flynn does that, it. Rachel, then does that mean Michael Flynn might be signaling, signaling the president to say, hey, look, I'm still down with you. Pardon me, please. Well, it, it could, yes. But the thing about it is what Michael Flynn provided, that information and this tape and, you know, this phone call, this isn't actually a new phone call. This existed. It's part of the Mueller report. It was part of the special investigation. Yeah, but investigation. now it's out in the public, it was and turned... that's what makes it a, a different. Well, this is why it needs to potentially get spun, right? And it can be spun in a way where the president can utilize it to, um, you know, rile up the base and get everybody behind the fact that this whole thing was just a witch hunt. Or it could be used in a different way. And if Michael Flynn comes out and he does this, and it becomes a tool in the president's arsenal in the 2020 election, he will be able to pardon him. But if he pardons him for stuff that's already out, it's almost like if people are concerned that there's a pardon happening that's not appropriate, it just it won't hold the same weight as people might think that it would. All right, Michael, so listen, uh, I think Rachel's saying that the, the, the voicemail may not be a thing, but mm -hmm. I think you say it, it could be a thing. So for those looking, uh -huh. Michael, for a smoking gun in one of the 10 obstruction of justice questions raised in the special counsel report, is this it, the audio from Trump personal attorney John Dowd? 
It, it, it could be, and, and let me just say that if there's some kind of message there to Mike Flynn by Dow that's given at Trump's direction that somehow he should not cooperate, that he should just hang tight, that he should just be a good soldier and carry on and kind of fight the fight for the president, then that's a problem, and that's that's going to be considered conduct that the Congress can look at if they're going to impeach. Uh, it, it, let me say this now: if if in fact he's changing his lawyers because they're going to encourage him to try to get out of his plea agreement, then he needs to go ahead and look for a new set of lawyers after them because that's uh, he, he got one of the most lenient. <laughs> deals that you could imagine uh, going into this thing. The federal prosecutor recommended as, as little as no jail time for him. Uh, for, and only for somebody who was right he in the only, middle of this. You, that's right. That's yeah. right. Right in, right in the middle of the investigation and, and, and talking to the Russians and uh, you know and, and lying about it. I mean, they're just they're just it, it's absolutely boggles the mind. So we've all expected that somewhere the amount of cooperation, the amount of information that he's got to share with federal prosecutors uh, has been significant. Otherwise, he wouldn't have looked at such a reduced reduced charge. So I don't know that it's going to be about uh, trying to get out of the plea. I, I think you're going to see, in fact, that this tape is a problem. That it's uh, indicative of some type of encouragement to be obstructive, whether that be with the congressional investigation or maybe at the time of the Mueller investigation, whether or not they move forward and use that as part of a basis for a charge of high crimes and misdemeanors under the impeachment uh, scenario. And if, in fact, that's the way Nancy Pelosi drives this train, then we'll see. But, we'll see. But, uh, less, yeah, there's just nothing, there, there's nothing else that I can see right now outside of that, that voicemail that, that's particularly enlightening about what may be going on in the Flynn camp. Rachel, I got to give you 20 seconds uh, on this last answer uh, here. You know, as investigations of the president and his campaign continue, I mean, does do you have any specific expectations in terms of outcome? No, not at all. I mean, at this point, you know, I think that we are going to need to see what happens on June 14th with regard to this next status hearing, because back in December, when Michael the Flynn. judge... Yes, with regard to Michael Flynn, back in December, the judge wasn't a huge fan of him and basically not taking the responsibility, so he continued everything. And so, but I think that going to Michael's point, we've seen a whole lot of crazy in the last couple of years, right? So the fact that this might be completely unheard of to give up a sweet deal for whatever reasons we might not know about, it still could happen. This whole thing has been very bizarre from the get-go. A whole lot of crazy. We're going to quote you and, <laughs> and say that's why our wine consumption is on, on very, very uh, high uh, <laughs> income, let's say. Uh, Rachel Self, Michael Moore, thank you very much.